with part two of the 86 Roller 302 teardown. So um, today we're going to pull the short block apart and go through our pieces and um, check our health of things and see what we need to take the machine shop and what we need to do to the engine overall. So anyway, let's get rolling and tear into this thing. All right, I saved the best one for last year for our demonstration. We see we got the other seven off. So this is cylinder number one, and it showed a little bit of scoring in the cylinder where the other ones looked pretty clean. So if there's going to be anything interesting, it's going to be on this cylinder. So anyway, some of the basics of how to pull a um, piston out of an engine properly without causing any damage. Um, first thing you want to do is get the crank into a place where you can get to your rod bolts. So then um, you'll just simply break those loose and take them off. Which is pretty simple. They're not all that tight. They're pretty small. You want to set these aside somewhere where you know you're not going to lose them, your two rod nuts. And now, you want to use something like a rubber mallet. I got this from the dollar store, so they're pretty easy to come by. And we're just simply going to tap on these connecting rod studs, and it should come loose pretty easily. And then you get your rod cap off. Again, you want to set this in a place where you're not going to drop it because uh, you don't want to get any deformation uh, in these caps if you can help it. So then we're just going to take the end of our hammer here. The, again, it's wood, so we're not going to damage anything. And we're going to tap our um, connecting rod studs and hopefully knock the engine or knock the piston out of the engine. Now you want to be careful that you do not hit the crank with the um, rod studs. It's really easy to do this. So um, anyway, you want to hold it in a position where you can easily guide the piston out. And we're just going to get that little bearing out of there. So we're just going to tap it right on past the crank, move the crank a little further out of the way. And then we're just going just gonna to tap this thing right on out of here. And as you see, they come out very easily. So, and there you have it. You want to make sure you are in a position where you can catch your piston. You don't want it to go, you know, crash into the ground, hitting on the ground, especially if you plan to reuse them. So, we see here this, this cylinder, or uh, this wrist pin is pretty darn tight. Some pretty good scoring on this piston. We'll have to look into it further to see if uh, we can reuse it, but um, our oiling rings are seized, so we had some issues here. All right, so now that we're to this point, we're just going to go ahead and break all our main cap bolts loose, and it um, doesn't matter. You can take one off at a time. Um, you're not going to really affect anything. So we're just going to work straight down the line and take these off and lay these out. And after we get our crank out, we're going to go ahead and put these back on so we don't lose them or they don't get damaged. So they'll usually stay with the block. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and get these all broken loose. And they're tight, but they're not too tight. It's not too terrible to break loose, as you can see. So anyway, we'll just work on through this and get our crank yanked out of here and take a look at its condition. All right, so once you have all your uh, main cap bolts loose, you're gonna go ahead and get your main caps off. Now usually they're gonna be pretty tight like this, so again, your rubber mallet comes into play. Wanna make sure not to 
hit the journals of your crank, and you're just going to give them a few light taps back and forth, and eventually they'll come right off as so. So we're going to pull the rest of these off just like this. Remember, you want to make sure your bolts are out before you go tapping on them, and to move your crank out of the way. So we'll get all these out, and we'll lift this crank on out of here and take a look at it. All right, so we got everything loose here, and I'm just going to slowly lift up on this crank, and there we go. Now we got our thrust cap loose. I had a little bit of tension on the screws, I didn't want to yank the crank right out of there and drop it on the ground. So anyway, um, that's another way to get that off if it's uh, pretty darn tight like that. So this roommate seal can be difficult sometimes, but if you wiggle this rear cap around just enough, it'll come right off your crank and it's that easy. Now we can lift our crank right on now. We want to pull this rear main seal off so it doesn't cause you any issues. That's the uh, 80s one piece rear main seal. Pretty nice idea that they finally implemented. So we're going to just pull our crank right on up and out of here. If some bearings stick to it, you know that happens. It's better dropping those than dropping the crank. You're going to reuse your bearings anyway. But anyway, we'll wipe this crank down and we'll inspect it for uh, any damage and determine what type of machine work we need to do moving forward. Now, as you go through, you should have been removing all your bearings, and if not, you can move them from your rod and your block at a later date. But I'm just going to go ahead and do it now. Now some of them will slip right out, as you see this back one um, came right out. Now what I want to make mention of is there's these little tangs on these bearings. Now you don't want to push those tangs down into your bearing race. You want to push on the side that does not have a tang on it and um, push it out that way so you don't damage anything and you, know, you would run the risk of spinning a bearing later. So anyway, I'm going to get all these. Um, pushed on out of here. Usually, um, put this down here for a second. So this thrust bearing is one that's usually kind of a son of a gun, but if you take your um, screwdriver and get right on the edge of it, keeping in mind the tang is on the other side, you can usually just put it right on the lip, give her a few taps, and she'll come right out. You don't damage your, uh, your bearing race here, and um, your bearings can come right out nice and easy. So anyway, I just want to make mention of that um, useful tech tip there. One more thing I almost forgot to mention. Again, as I said before, you want to put your main caps back on um, before you move any farther. So they generally stay with the engine. Your main caps are going to have a number and an arrow, and they're numbered um, from front to back, so one being the front, and they have an arrow on them, usually, and that faces towards the front of the engine as well. So you don't have to torque them down, you can just kind of um, get them all on here and then get them snug with your wrench. And then from there you should be good to go, and we'll move on to pulling the final thing out of this engine, which is the camshaft. All right, so the last thing we're going to pull out of here is the camshaft. All right, so I guess you're wondering why I waited till the end of the engine to pull the camshaft and not after I had the timing cover and timing chain off. Now, I did this because the camshaft, as you can see, is much easier to get at. So just like when we build an engine, the camshaft is the first thing that we put in because we can easily guide it without scoring all the bearings, it's the last thing that we take out. So on the Ford, we have a little cam plate here, or a cam button, whatever you want to call it. And a 7 16 socket is all you need. There's two bolts, and we're going to go ahead and just break these loose. This is another item that, after we have it off, we're going to um, reinstall back on the engine so we don't lose it. So anyway, 
These come out real nice and easy. Got my cam bolt in here so I didn't lose that. We'll set that aside for now and these bolts aside for now. Our cam plate comes off just that easy. And now we can finally get the camshaft out. So um, sometimes they're stuck in there pretty good. And that's a pretty good possibility that this one's going to be pretty tight with the oil varnish. So I'm just going to get our bolt in here for some leverage. Usually if you put a twist on it while you pull it out, just like that it comes out. So anyway, we're just going to guide it on out of here. We're going to put new cam bearings in, so unlike installing a cam, we're not all too concerned with dinging our bearings up. So we just want to get it yanked out of here, this is the main objective. But you can see how this could be tricky if you couldn't have two hands in here. So makes a big difference. And anyway, there's our stock um, 5.0 camshaft. And we're not going to reuse this cam, so we're not really concerned about the condition of it. Looks pretty good. The roller cams really uh, can handle a pretty good beating and last a long time. But the performance cam's going in, so we're not too concerned about this. Anyway, we're going to put our cam plate back on and then we're done with the block for now and we're ready for cleaning. We're not going to pop our, um, we could pop our bearings out for our cam and we will before we clean, but um, we can do that at a later date.